So today's preview is on aircraft in the new edition, with what appears to be a few sensible changes to planes and a couple of interesting teasers about strategic reserves and Forge World's rules. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. We've been covering the 9th edition news and rules changes as they've come out, and today it's very much aircraft themed, as Warhammer Community has previewed the rules for flyers in 9th edition. We've basically got how they'll return to the board with strategic reserves, exactly how they'll be interacting with infantry and other ground based units, and a list of how they'll acquire the aircraft keyword. Let's jump straight in then and see what we've got. So probably one of the single biggest and best quality of life type changes for aircraft is the ability to enter strategic reserves rather than just automatically dying when they were about to fly off the table. Previously you could have some silly interactions with aircraft, basically if you flew them into an area of the board where they wouldn't be able to make a turn and then get back onto the board the following turn, then the flyer would be destroyed and it would be removed from the table. If your opponent made some risky moves you could even potentially, with clever positioning, force this to happen particularly if you had an army with enormous board coverage, such as orcs for example. For me this was always a bit of a stupid rule really, aircraft wouldn't really care too much about troops on the ground, they'll be flying straight over them, so I think that this sounds like a perfectly sensible change. Basically the free text in the Warhammer community article says that they can leave the battle and they'll be able to enter strategic reserve rather than this happening. They haven't said whether or not aircraft are going to be able to do this voluntarily, say if they would like to spend a turn off the board and be safe from enemy shooting. I'm sure they'll certainly be able to do it if they have no other flight options, but I suspect they probably will be able to do it voluntarily as well, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. They have clarified how they come back from strategic reserves though. Basically when they come back from strategic reserves it is very free where you deploy them, basically they can just deep strike as per normal anywhere that's greater than 9 inches of enemy models away, and they can face any direction, it doesn't just have to be one way. It's a bit different to what they could have done, they might have said that the aircraft needs to come back from that same board edge the one that they flew off from, and that could have limited their positioning, but this is pretty much free form, aside from the restriction of having to stay away from enemy models. They also can't charge that turn, which they're often not able to anyway, but some can if they have the hover mode. For me this seems pretty sensible to be honest, it means that they can jump on and off the board, although I think that typically you're generally still not going to want to enter strategic reserves, as it's going to mean that you're going to be spending a turn with your plane off the table, so you'll be missing an important shooting phase. That means that still not having to be driven off the board is generally going to be a good thing, but it's no longer just an unmitigated disaster of your plane just being destroyed for good. I could see some scenarios where this could help as well. Say if you wanted an absolutely massive beta strike on turn 2, you could maybe have some planes fly off the board turn 1, and then maybe join in a massive army beta strike, or you brought units on from reserve the next turn, or maybe moved forward with some very fast moving enemies to press the enemy with loads of threats all at once. I personally am a big fan of this change, it just seems to make a lot of sense to me. It also gives us a little bit of a clue about how the strategic reserve special rule will work. In prior previews they have talked about being able to expend command points to place some units in your army in strategic reserve, and then come in from one board edge sometime later in the game. This rule gives us a bit of a further clue to that, implying that they'll have to set up wholly within 6 inches of a particular battlefield edge, so it's one more piece in the puzzle there. From what I said before, it sounds like we're going to be able to access more and more battlefield edges as they go throughout the game, maybe bringing them in at the sides on turn 2, and maybe even in the rear of the enemy army on turn 3 for example. That's just a guess though, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Secondly, with another small but sensible change, they've also clarified the way that they act with ground units in 9th edition, as throughout a lot of 8th aircraft have been causing some annoying problems for ground units, basically being able to move block things like knights, which always felt pretty daft to be honest, again as their aircraft are supposed to be zooming along quite a lot above the battlefield. It doesn't really make sense that an Imperial Knight, for example, is going to have any qualms about moving along underneath them. Now to be honest, just by the nature of the way that the models are made, it is always going to be a bit of a problem, they have quite big bases, and I don't think it would be a very sensible idea to allow models to finish on top of an aircraft's base, so in reality they are always going to do an element of move blocking. If you park an aircraft on any bit of the battlefield, then obviously enemy troops aren't going to be able to go on to that, and that is going to be a bit of a problem. But aside from this, Games Workshop do seem to have made it about as unrestrictive as it possibly could be. We heard about engagement range, how that's 1 inches from away from enemy models, and we have a raft of clarifications here. Firstly, models can move within an aircraft's engagement range, so if you have an Imperial Knight, there's nothing to stop you trotting right up to that aircraft and not having to care about it, such as locking it in combat or anything. Secondly, models can move over aircraft and their bases when they make any kind of move. This is the same as the way it was FAQ'd before now, you can essentially move from one side of the aircraft to the other. 
but a big aircraft can still pose a big issue for big infantry units, say if you want to move a whole load of orc boys to the other side of the aircraft, some of them aren't going to be able to make the distance, so you're going to have to go round it to some extent. Next, aircraft can make a normal move or an advance, even when within engagement range of enemy models. Basically, it doesn't have to fall back, because it isn't in combat really. Units can make a normal move or advance, even if they're only within engagement range of an aircraft. Same thing really, if you're not in combat, then of course you should be able to advance. And finally, and quite importantly, when a model performs a heroic intervention, pile in or consolidate, you ignore aircraft unless the model can fly, which again seems pretty sensible to me. If you can't fight it, then there's no point in having to heroically intervene or pile into it, so it seems like another very sensible change, as you'll get some very weird interactions with heroically intervention, and piling in and consolidating towards aircraft to say, stop an enemy unit piling into your unit, or to use your own unit to get on objectives or things, which was a bit strange. Interestingly enough though, there's nothing that allows you to shoot when you're within engagement range of an aircraft unfortunately, and this is going to be very problematic for bothering to move inside engagement range of an aircraft in the first place. As I mean, say if you want to move your Imperial Knight forwards, then you don't want to be moving it within an inch of an aircraft if that's going to stop you shooting in the shooting phase. I'm not saying that there might not be rules that allow you to shoot somewhere else in the book, but without a rule like that, then it does mean effectively you're still not going to want to put units anywhere within one inch of said aircraft as you could just be wasting all their guns for a turn. Similarly, it doesn't look like you can charge if you're already within engagement range of an aircraft, again, unless there are rules elsewhere. So a sort of hope in the shooting and charge phase of the book, there might be things that allow you to do this anyway, as otherwise just literally being able to finish your move within an inch of the aircraft's engagement range isn't going to be something that many units are going to choose to do. I do quite like it that they've said that you can move over aircraft and their bases for any kind of move, so that's not just normal moves in the movement phase. It'll also mean they don't get in the way as much for things like piling, consolidate, or heroic intervention, for example, or when charging. So that's good that that's a fair bit more tightened up. And it's also interesting to note that aircraft themselves can't move within an engagement range of other units, as per these rules at least. So the aircraft themselves are going to be a little bit more restricted as to where they move to compared with the infantry. Which I guess is kind of only fair if that could tie up enemy units from being able to shoot or charge without forcing them to move. So overall, I do like these changes, I think that they are better in 8th edition, though they don't 100% stop flyers being a movement nuisance. I think it honestly would be better if we could shoot or charge with an engagement range of flyers, provided you don't have the fly keyword yourself, as that would really get it a lot more towards the state of no real interactivity between flyers and ground-based troops, at least in terms of combat and fighting hand-to-hand. There's also nothing in these set of rules about character targeting, again meaning that unless there's another rule somewhere else in the book, then flyers are still screening characters, although I strongly suspect they might have just put that in the character targeting section if they had made any change to these kind of rules. I think that'd be quite a nice change in my opinion, just because you'd get around the situation of, oh I can't target that Eldar Farsia because there's a plane up there, which again always felt a little bit daft to me. Finally we get to the aircraft keyword list which I believe is just formalising a keyword in actual rules that was already given to all planes via an FAQ and chapter approved. Basically they've listed all their core aircraft in the game that are going to be getting the aircraft keyword to access all these rules that we've already talked about. And I believe same as the previous list, the Helldrake isn't included as it functions pretty differently as it can engage in combat pretty effectively despite having the flyer battlefield role. As far as I can tell, this seems to be a pretty complete list. Please let me know in the comments though if there are any flyers that you were expecting to see on here that don't appear to have been mentioned. In terms of Forge World flyers, apparently they will be getting the keyword as well, but they have a pretty interesting quote down in a footnote saying that the list of Forge World flyers receiving the aircraft keyword will be included in their rules updates on the same day that the new edition is launched. Now this one really quite intrigued me. It could certainly mean one of two things. Either they are just getting an FAQ update to all of their previous Forge World indexes, or potentially and hopefully that we might actually be seeing full rewrites of the datasheets for Forge World models pretty soon in 9th edition. Maybe I'm slightly getting excited about nothing there, but they have been mentioning already that they have been updating the Forge World rules and that they would be released relatively soon towards the start of 9th edition. I guess we can only hope. So let me know what you think of the new aircraft rules. I think it's undeniably a step in the right direction, and we haven't even seen the full picture yet, so there might be further details that we're not aware of. Just from these though, it does look like they might have been able to go a little bit further if they really wanted to make planes and ground-based infantry not be fighting hand-to-hand -hand in melee combat or impeding each other's movement quite as much. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics, where we'll have regular coverage of the 9th edition news as it comes out. I'm sure we'll be getting lots more over the next few weeks.
If you've been enjoying my videos, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which is what allows me to spend quite so much time making videos about 40k tactics. If you have been watching regularly, then any support is most greatly appreciated, as well as helping support content creation. Channel Patreons also get a few other benefits, such as seeing various videos early each week, before anyone else does, regular polls on what sort of videos you'd like to see next, and a prize draw every month where I post out some miniatures to someone in the world. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.